Okay, good afternoon everyone. Good afternoon class. So, how are you today? Great. It's good to see you that you are fine this beautiful afternoon. So, are you now ready with our lesson for this afternoon? Okay, good to hear that. So, before we will start with our lesson this afternoon, everybody, please stand. Let us start first with a short prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Okay, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Okay, please, everybody, take your seat, arrange your chairs, and pick up pieces of paper. Okay, I hope everything is ready now. So, for our attendance this afternoon, I would like to call... Uh, every group's representative to tell me who are those absent. Okay, let's start with group one. Okay, that's good. How about group two? Okay, very good. All are present. How about group three? That's great. Group four. And the last, group five. So, everybody, let's give a round of applause. Everybody is Everybody are all present for this afternoon. So today, I'm sure that you are now excited with our lesson for this afternoon because we are going to explore new things like arts, paintings, and artifacts, especially in the East Asian countries. Okay, so if you could still remember in our previous lesson, we have learned... Um, the culture of East Asian countries, um, their arts, and their paintings as well. So today, we are going to learn East Asian artifacts and objects. So what are those countries that we are going to um, learn? What particular countries in East Asia that we are going to learn? Now, I want you to look for a video clip. Okay, please. Uh, try and observe the music video. Watching the music video, 
All right. Can you tell me from what country the music video came from? Okay. Do you have any idea, especially the music itself, the videos that you have seen a while ago? Yes, that's great. Great. I mean, that's great. It came from in the country of China. So, China is part of East Asian country. Very good. Now, after watching the video, can you tell me, can you describe me, okay, the pictures that you have seen? What have you observed about the colors that are being used and also the lightings that are being used? Okay, it's vibrant. The color is very light. The color is, uh, it looks very happy and joyful. Well, that's a good observation. Now, let's end here. I want you to travel to East Asia. So, we are going to ride in a play and let's try to explore the countries in East Asia, particularly in China, Japan, and Korea. So, are you now ready? All right, that's great. So, let's start now. Okay, now I want you to observe the map. Okay, let us try to look at the map and tell me Okay, the particular countries in East Asia. Okay, just I'll just give you China, Japan, and Korea. Okay, now you can see here the map of East Asia. So can you point out where is China? Okay, we all know that uh, in East Asia, China is one of the biggest country so where is east asia okay yes this is so you can see here the country of china where you know yes it's where you can see the dragon dance okay where you can celebrate chinese new year where the music video a while ago is being originated now how about the second country can you locate where is korea okay okay you can see here in this country korea north and south korea now how about the last one japan can you point out where is japan okay yes where is japan Okay, here, you can see here in Japan. So, among the three countries, China is the biggest country in East Asia. Alright, so, now let's have a short activity. Now, as you move around the countries, written below, which is the China, Japan, and Korea, I want you to group each pictures according to the country they belong to by writing its number, the correct heading. So, I'll be presenting you different pictures. Okay, I'll be presenting you six pictures and you are going to identify what specific countries do they belong. Okay, are you now ready? Okay, that's great. So, you can see here, China, Japan, and Korea. Now, let's start with picture number one. Can you describe me what is the picture all about and where that certain particular uh, place is originated? Yes? All right, very good. So, picture number one is originated in... China. So, picture number one is the Great Wall of China. Now, how about number two? Okay, number two is... Yes, can you tell me what is picture number two? Alright, that's great. It's coming from Japan. It's 
the tallest, uh, not the tallest, but it is one of the popular or famous temples in Yokohama, Japan. Okay, very good. That's amazing. So, it means to say that you are familiar with some other places in East Asia. Now, how about number three that is very famous these days? Okay, can you tell me what is picture number three? So, picture number three is coming from, of course, in Korea. So, we all know that K-pop these days are very popular and a lot of Filipino people are, you know, who loves and adore. Uh, a lot of Filipino people are very fond of watching K-pop, Korean dramas, or Korean novellas. How about number four? Which country does it belong? Of course, it's coming from, yes? All right, that's great. It's coming from China. Of course, you can see here the Tai Chi. Uh, uh, the Tai Chi, the dress, the kimono that is used in China. Very good. Good job. Now, how about number five? Okay, this is very famous. Uh, a lot of children are like folding papers, making ships, making trash cans. Uh, making butterflies using those papers. So what kind of artwork is that? Okay, the paper folding, it's originated in what country? Yes, Vian. All right, it's coming from the country of Japan because Japan is, uh, it is called origami. The paper Paper folding is originated in Japan. That's great. Good job. Now, how about number six, the big drum? All right. Yes, may I call in? Jamaica? Yes, what is your answer, please? So, the big drum is coming from Japan. Wow, that's great. So, can everybody give uh, each one a round of applause? For answering it right. Good job. So it means to say that you are familiar with some of the artifacts, objects that is coming from the East Asian country. So high five for that. Now for this afternoon, let us read our learning comp competency. Incorporate the design, form, and spirit of East Asian artifacts and objects to one's creation. So we are going to incorporate different kinds of design, applying the elements of arts. Okay, so why do we need to incorporate? Why is it important to incorporate the designs, the forms of the arts in Southeast Asia? It's because uh, it's, it is important to incorporate the design forms and spirit of East Asian artifacts and objects to one's creation to know how the context of their fascinating artworks influence the historical and cultural phenomena in the world of art. Okay, So we ha are going to familiarize uh, the artifacts the objects, the forms of arts in East Asian countries, especially in Japan, China, and Korea, for us to learn also their culture. Because we all know these countries influence our countries. Is that right? Okay, that's great. Now, this point, now let's try to discuss more about the different artifacts in um in East Asia. Now, I want you to look at these pictures. Okay. So, if you can see these artifacts like paper cuttings, um, knot tying, pants, and this kind of designs, what particular country you can see that? Of course, yes. Mahara, yes, it's coming from China, very good. So in China, there are some 
common uh, artifacts that we can learn. So one of these are the three main types of roofs in traditional Chinese architecture that influence our Asian roofs. So Asian architecture. So you can see there, the first type is this kind uh, of roof which is called straight incline. So what is this straight incline? Okay, straight incline describes as more economical for common Chinese architecture. So this is the basic roofs that is being used. Yes, that is right. Now, let's look here number two. This kind of architecture design is called as the multi-incline, which roofs with two or more sections of incline. These roofs use for residents for wealthy Chinese people. So, if you are rich, if you are coming from the royal bloods of China, then your house might be designed as like this. Now, let's have here the three kind of roof. It's called the swifting. Swifting, I mean. It describes has curves that rise at the corners of the roof. Roof. These, you can see there, these are usually preserved for temples and palaces. So if you will visit uh, ancient um, legend places in China, then you can see these kinds of roofs okay, and their temples. Now let's move on here. Okay, is Asian temples. So particularly in Japan, China, and Korea, most likely they use this kind of roof. It's because they believe that it will protect them from the elements of water, wind, and fire. So Buddhist believes that it helped ward of evil spirit, which were deemed to be straight lines. So these are called roof guards okay so everything's clear all right that's great i hope that everything's clear now let's move on to the next um artifacts or objects that we can found in china which is called okay the calligraphy okay if we all know okay calligraphy is the art of beautiful hand writing traditionally Painting involves essentially the same techniques as calligraphy and is done with a brush dip in black or colored ink holes not used. So we are already practicing, practicing and using the calligraphy already. So different designs of uh, calligraphy that is written in the scroll or in a wall paintings. Okay, now that are those are example artworks or artifacts in China. Now let's try to move on this uh, next country. Now you can see there okay, paper folding, pens, paintings. So which particular country does it originate? So it is originated in the country of alright in Japan. So as you can see, the artifacts in Japan and China are most likely uh, the same. It's because uh, there are neighbor neighboring countries and they influence each other. So one of the artifact, famous artifacts in Japan is what I have said a while ago is the paper folding. So it is called as origami in Japan. So the term origami came from ori, meaning it's folding. So you're going to fold papers. And kami meaning paper. So ori means um, folding and kami means paper. So it is traditional Japanese art of paper folding. Traditional origami consists of folding a single sheet of square paper into sculpture without cutting, gluing, taping, or even making it. So, 
um, we are adopted origami already in the Philippines. So we sometimes used origami in making swans, in making vase, in making uh, flower pots, and sometimes pencil holders. So we adopted this one in Japan. Okay, the next artifact also is the wood block printing. Okay, so the best known and most popular style of Japanese art is the Tokyoe, which is Japanese for pictures of the floating world. And it's related to the style of wood block print, making that show scenes of harmony and carefree. So it's somewhat like putting a dot or carving in a block or in a wood. So that is one of the famous artifacts also in Japan. Now let's try to move on to our next country. Okay, so you can see there the different artifacts. Okay, so we have here Korea. So the first one is China. The next one is Japan. And the third one is Korea. So for Korea, one of the famous artifacts there is their Korean mask, which is so-called the Tao or Tak Ah. Okay, originated with religious meaning, just like the mask of other countries, which also have religious or artistic origins. Korea has a rich history of masks. They use it in funeral services to help banish evil spirits. And theater plays dating back to the prehistoric age, masks were often made of alder wood with several coats of locker to give the mask gloss and waterproof them for wearing. They usually use painted and often hand hinges for mouth movement. So for the mask in Korea, particularly each of the colors that are being applied and are being used in the mask is that has a represent representation. So if it's color blue, it has a meaning. If it's color white, it has meaning also. Usually they said white, it means purity. Blue, it means royalty. So each of the color that is being used in the Korean mask has its meaning and has its role. Sometimes when you use a uh, black, uh, black and white color of mask, it simplifies that they are belayed or there are uh, the bad character in the story. Okay, so do you have any questions? Do you have any clarification? Yes? Is every, everything clear? Okay, I guess everything's clear then. Now let's try to make an activity this afternoon. So you prepare your bond paper, your pencils, your ball pens, your markers, because we are going to try uh, some of the uh, some of the artifacts in East Asia. Okay, so for our first activity, write your selected verse or message in calligraphic style that incorporates the design. This may be about animals, people, landscape, and anything about the environment, form, and spirit of East Asian artifacts. So you're going to affix your nickname or your signature. You can use paintbrush if you want to. You can use colored pencil, or you could also use um, ball pen if you if you don't have any other materials. So if you are not uh, if you are not uh, available, if you cannot do it, then you could maybe cut out pictures. Okay. Now let's have here example of calligraphy using. Uh, your first or your favorite codes. So I have your example. Trust is the timing of your life. Okay. I have also here be brave. Okay. 
So I will give you five minutes. No, five minutes is very short. I will give you ten minutes. You just speak a short quote or a short verse so that you can make it uh, more easier for you. So I'll give you ten minutes to do that. Okay. Okay, so for the uh, for the calligraphy making, so these are the rubrics. Okay, you have here category following directions, creativity and workmanship, incorporation of designs, forms and elements of arts from East Asian countries. So you look at the rubric so that it will be your guide and how you are going to make your own a simplified calligraphy. Okay? Alright, so please continue doing it. Okay, so I guess everybody is done. Okay, I'm done. Okay, are, are everybody done with the first activity? Okay, so I'm sure that you are now ready with our second activity. This is very exciting and this is more challenging so for our second activity we have here the mask making so you are going to create and design your own mask inspired by the mask in korea applying the elements of arts so you incorporate the designs coming from the other countries in east asia applying uh, those arts and design in your mask okay so for those who can't do it like you are having a difficulty in drawing or in make cutting uh big cartoons then you could uh, use cutting papers or cutting designs or pictures that can make your own mask okay for those who are not uh who cannot draw for those who are who cannot use their hands, of course you could utilize other objects like posting, or you can ask your classmates to cut it for you and then paste it on a, a cartoon on a hard cardboard. Okay, all right. So these are the exam example of mask making. Okay, this one. So this is not really a Korean mask, but you are applying designs from other countries. So you incorporate the designs, uh, the elements of arts coming from China, Japan, and also there are uh, a touch of Philippine okay, design. Okay, this one. Okay, the mask. I have also here... This one. Okay, this is good. This is also an example of mask. This is not really a typical Korean mask, but it has a Korean inspired. Okay? So for this activity, I'll, I'll be giving you 10 minutes to do it. Okay, just cut or any objects that can make a simple mask that has a Korean inspired okay all right so I guess everybody is are done so kindly keep your activities like your activity one and your uh, activity two which is the mask making and then you are going to explain that one next day and the next day why did you choose that kind of design and then i will collect it later all right so let's try to have this quotation before we will end with our class now everybody read the beauty of the world lies in the diversity of its people all right so why do we need to learn is uh, Asian culture, East Asian arts, East Asian artifacts, where in fact we are Filipinos. 
what is your main idea? Why do we need to learn all of these things? Why do we need to incorporate designs from one a country to another country? Okay, it's, it is because we are okay, in one world. Okay, we need to uh, learn their culture for us also uh, to appreciate their culture and apply it in our in our country so it's really important to be as one okay you know uh, learning the uh, learning the artifacts learning the culture in other countries is very essential for us especially china japan and korea has a big influence influence in our country okay i hope you got something in our lesson for this afternoon so guys i'll be giving you your answer sheets okay so for your answer sheets i'll give you 10 minutes to answer that okay all right okay so i guess everybody are done so kindly pass your paper forward okay thank you for today and god bless you